Apostle and Prophet Elizabeth Sherry Elijah Nicomaya. Greetings in the name of Yahushua. Long ago, God gave me a word that was, if the suffering had not been great, the ministry would not be great. The testimony of Apostle and Prophet Elizabeth Elijah Nicomaya. My calling into the ministry. My life has not been an easy one, but the Lord Yahushua gave me a word, and He said, Be not ashamed of your past, but use it for Yahushua's glory to be a witness for Him, bringing souls to Yahushua. I have never known a mother or father's love, or that of a sister or brother, aunt or uncle, cousin or grandma and grandpa. In this world till I married, I was alone, but I knew there was a God and Yahushua that he was someone that died 2,000 years ago at Calvary. No one ever told me he could be my best friend and his Holy Spirit would live in me or that I didn't have to be perfect for Yahushua to love me. I was judged because I was a nobody in this world, no family and a mother that was sent to jail for child abuse and child neglect and even attempted murder on me. I was thrown from one foster home to another, afraid to disobey and trying to be everything everyone wanted me to be, but always feeling like I didn't belong anywhere. As soon as the newness wore off at the foster homes, I was discarded like the garbage on Friday and picked up by the social caseworker. My mom always said I was not worthy of anyone to love me nor care. I was the rotten apple that spoiled the rest. I was sexually abused, molested, raped as a child by my mother's husband's boyfriend, stepbrothers, and of course by her. She hated me and never so much as put her arms around me that I can remember. I learned very young not to trust anyone. I learned very young that I hated myself and life. I attempted suicide many times while still a young child, walking in front of moving cars and overdosing pills at the age of eight. Much damage has been done to me so that at the age of ten my mother's boyfriend had a nephew and introduced my ex-husband who was very controlling, cold, distant, and much older than me. My mother wanted to get rid of me. I was a constant reminder she was getting older as I got older. I was taken from her and became a ward of the court and because I didn't know what else to do with me, I married at a very young age. My ex-husband became my father and because of the age difference, he totally dominated me in every way. Yet I was a possession, not knowing love, only abuse in a worse form, both mentally and physically, sexually. I won't go into details, but the first week we married, I attempted suicide because he committed adultery. After that, between miscarriages, suicide attempts, and breakdowns, that was my life for six years till I found Yahushua, or should I say Yahushua found me. The last suicide attempt I had taken a bottle of Secondal, 100 milligrams after my ex-husband had cheated on me once again and said he wasn't coming back. I came the closest I ever came to dying, even had an out-of-body experience. I won't go into that, but I will say I prayed while I lay dying and said, quote, Yahushua, just tell me why you didn't love me before you throw me into hell. Please, just send someone to hold my hand while I am dying. I will never forget that prayer, because I lay there from noon till midnight, three days from my birthday, between consciousness and unconsciousness only reviving long enough to vomit and lay in my vomit as I passed out again. How anyone found me, no one understands to this day. It was a miracle, but the police broke down the door and Yahusha was there all along, answering my prayer, holding my hand, though I did not know it. I was put in intensive care in 72 hour round the clock watch, but no one was there to watch me except the nurses. No visitors. Even my ex-husband was angry and refused to visit me, saying he had to work to pay the hospital bill I caused. I didn't leave a suicide note, so my ex-husband forced the hospital to release me to his custody. I was still under age. When I came home, it was my birthday, April 4th, the day I should have been buried. It was Easter time also. I was so heartbroken, no one cared it was my birthday. I tried to take my life the day I was released from the hospital, but my ex-husband took the gun away. I had an ER doctor who told me the next time I wanted to kill myself, do it right and walk in front of a train where no one would be able to pick up the pieces. I am convinced that Satan sent that doctor to me. One year later, I remembered that doctor's words, and that's what I intended to do since we lived out in the country by the railroad tracks. But instead, Yahushua had other plans. 
A friend of my ex-husband, a lady he knew and grew up with and later committed adultery with while she pretended to lead him to the Lord, called me on the phone the night I planned on killing myself and invited me to my first Pentecostal church. I went to say goodbye to God, figuring maybe he would be there. Instead, the preacher gave a word of knowledge and talked about someone who planned on killing themselves and telling that person, Yahushua said, don't do it. He loved that person and wanted to use them for his glory. He asked who that person was and to come forward and give their life to Yahushua. I did. When he asked who didn't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues to raise their hand, I raised my hand and said, I don't know what it is, but if it's from Yahushua, I want it. And boy, did I get it. <laughs> Yahushua showed me a light in my eyes and said I could never hate myself again, because if I did, since his spirit was in me, I would be hating him also. For the first time in my life, I thought I was pretty. Never again were there suicide attempts. I had a purpose, and that was to love people in a way I never knew, and to make sure people know how much Yahushua loves them, and to how they give their lives to Yahushua to get saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. That was nearly 30 years ago, and the fire in my bones just got hotter. My zeal for the Lord Yahushua knows no limits. I love Yahushua, and He is my only and true love above all else. My main desire is to serve Him all the days of my life and help people any way I can in ways no one ever helped me. To be there and comfort the broken, abused body of Yahushua and let them know it's the devil that is beating up on them, not Yahushua HaMashiach. Many times God has used me to stop men and women from killing themselves as I share my testimony. They end up getting saved and even my suicide attempts before I knew Yahushua served a purpose. I am called to minister the gospel of Yahushua HaMashiach with the anointing power of the Holy Ghost. My goal is to see millions saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost's manifested power. I strive to obey Yahushua and put Him first in my life in every way. I love and worship Him and keep Him first in my private life and ministry, doing all I can to reach the abused, beaten, feeling forsaken, and unloved, rejected body of Yahushua to prove Yahushua HaMashiach really does love them and died and rose on the third day and he would have done the same thing if it had only been for one person who accepted him. I want them to know the word of Yahweh can't lie and teach them and pray with them and most of all, love them. I have tried hard to always hear the sweet Holy Spirit's voice and be privileged when she uses this broken vessel of clay to bring the lost to Yahushua and bind up their wounds proving to them Yahushua is alive and still reigns, and He loves us and cares about everything we care about. I want to be used to bring Yahushua HaMashiach praise, honor, and glory as we see souls saved, delivered, healed through the name, word, and blood of Yahushua HaMashiach, proving God really can do all things through Yahushua that strengthens me. When I minister, I expect miracles and get them for Yahushua's glory. My life has changed much in these nearly 30 years, but the calling has not. Perhaps if my life had not been what it has been, I would not have the compassion I have when I minister, and there are a few shoes that I have not walked in so I can identify with their pain. Yahushua HaMashiach is my Lord and Savior, and I want to teach others what God has taught me, so they can teach others the awesome wonder of the God we serve. The calling God has placed on my life is that of evangelist which I have been for many, many years, making my life worth something of value, using it to bring the lost soul to Yahushua. For many years, I have been a lay pastor where the Lord has used me to minister. Now, international minister and ordained pastor, office of prophet and bride of Yahushua HaMashiach, a fisher of men and women, and teach the word and counsel using the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I have also been blessed with prophetic gifts, signs, wonders, and miracles have followed this ministry for Yahushua's glory because I am nothing without Yahushua. It's His Holy Spirit's anointing that breaks the shackles, yokes, and bondages off of His people. I am a woman and I have been judged for my blonde hair, makeup, slacks, the outward appearance. Some ministers have even said I wasn't allowed to minister in their churches till I had no makeup on. I am grateful that the Lord showed me it's not the cleanliness of a woman's skin, whether she has makeup and mascara on, but the cleanliness of her heart. My heart was cleansed nearly 30 years ago and still is cleansed with the cleansing blood of Yahushua HaMashiach. 
I have found the worst abuse and lack of love comes from behind the pulpits, jealous for the strong anointing and gifts, covetousness, and many pastors don't believe God speaks out of women prophets or in a woman ministering, especially as a pastor. But I continue to do what I have been called to do, and he continues to use me for Yahushua's glory. I am sent to the people and not to the pastors. The people always receive me in love, and I try not to be hurt and forgive the pastors who have treated me so terribly. I will let God be their judge and let them learn from their mistakes. Instead, I refuse to judge people by their outward appearances, color of skin, for black pastors have resented me because I am so white. I think it's God's sense of humor making me what Satan fears the most, a holy, spirit-filled pastor, also a gospel songwriter and singer. Satan tried so hard to destroy me, but this only produced crushing of the grapes, which brought forth new wine in the form of delivering anointed songs. See, all things do truly work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Yahushua knew in the end he would win, thereby proving I am more than a conqueror through Yahushua HaMashiach, my Lord. I believe the only purpose in my life was to be what I am now an anointed servant, disciple, and child of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Yahushua HaMashiach. Is there any higher calling than this? I think not. A broken vessel of clay, but a mighty warrior for Yahushua HaMashiach. I am called to preach the gospel to the four corners of the earth, to all races, kindred, and tongues. God has shown me the color of the skin is not important when I see people. I only see if they are red covered in the shed blood of Yahushua HaMashiach, our Yahushua Messiah. I have been chosen to be pastor over many churches. Please pray for me that I will always hear the voice of our Lord and Savior Yahushua HaMashiach and to do His perfect will, accomplishing what He created me for. I was told I can never lay down this ministry for it is my identity. Who I am is a broken vessel of God Yahweh, but a mighty warrior for Yahushua HaMashiach. Yahushua Messiah, Apostle Elizabeth Sherry Elijah. Email me at revholyfire at hotmail.com. The testimony of Elizabeth Sherry Elijah Nicomaya. There is no testimony without a test by Sherry Elizabeth Elijah Nicomaya, Part 2. Editor's Note In 2002, Elizabeth met her husband and Yahweh God ordained soulmate Nicomaya. Since then, they have been ministering side by side at the Almighty One Ministry. Theirs is a match made in heaven, for truly no two people are more united in their love and their devotion to Yahweh God, Yahushua Messiah, and Amaya, the Ruach HaGadosh Holy Spirit, than they are. November 26, 2002 my soulmate and now Yahweh ordained husband literally appeared at my door in Arkansas. Nico had been someone I knew as a partner for three years who gave occasionally tithe or an offering to the ministry. My beloved Nico was browsing the internet looking for information on Y2K and came across a woman that was trying to warn people. Her name was Linda C., a good friend for many years who had several prophecies posted at the Almighty Wind Ministry site. Linda is the reason we met because she was giving the URL to the Almighty One Ministry site on the internet. And Nico went to the ministry site and recognized Yahweh's voice in the prophecies. He wrote me a postal letter and that was how Yahweh brought us together. He started following the truths in the ministry and tithing financially as a partner in the ministry. I had spoken to Nico by phone when he called me several times, but still only knew him slightly. When Nico heard I was leaving Canada, Nova Scotia, where I had been ministering and was being told by the Holy Spirit to minister in Arkansas, he said that Yahweh told him he was also relocating to Arkansas. Nico lived an outdoorsman's dream. Nico lived a life of fishing walleye and hunting in Minnesota. Nico lived in the log cabin in seclusion, alone with nature and his creator Yahweh and his savior Yahushua. His ministry consisted of teaching others what he had learned from this ministry, bringing souls to Yahushua and teaching the truth of the prophecies. After I met Nico, I found out he had read all the prophecies given to me many times. He had committed them to his memory and was doing the work of an evangelist. Nico's other occupation was building bed and breakfast inns and being a guide to fishermen. He was single and lived a life of holiness and celibacy. Four years waiting for Yahweh to bring him his wife and soulmate if that was Yahweh and Yahushua's will. 
Nico was surprised when Yahweh spoke to his heart and told him to leave almost everything he owned and move to where I was living and offer his help to this ministry in whatever way we needed help. Nico tested the spirit that spoke this to his heart, for he had been following this ministry for approximately three years. He said when he saw my picture he fell in love with me and it was as if he already knew me. Nico said I looked like an angel and he felt like he had always known me. Still my beloved loved me from afar and never told me nor gave any hint that he was my beloved. He said he didn't think he was anointed enough to be my God-ordained husband. Nico prayed for my soulmate and the husband Yahweh had chosen for me before the foundation of the world to come to me. Nico wept over the bone of my bone poem as he felt my pain and loneliness and he believed and discerned that the poem was speaking of him, yet he didn't think he was anointed enough to be the man that had been promised to me for nearly 13 years. Nico told me one night he listened to me speaking that poem seven times in a row, weeping and praying for me. He said his desire was to protect me and he saw that part of me that I kept so well hidden and that is the little girl part that is so vulnerable. Other men over the years who had come and gone, Yahweh calls them the Nicomiah wannabes, <laughs> had only seen the anointing of a apostle or prophet, not the vulnerable childlike part of me. I tired of waiting so long for my God-ordained husband and soulmate to come, the one who was ordained to be my earthly leader in this worldwide ministry, so I made several mistakes and fell in love with the idea of being in love. I knew none was anointed enough to take over the reins of this ministry and to be the strong anointed husband I was promised by Yahweh. One man named David only wanted to use this ministry to promote the Seventh-day Adventist Church, while all along he tried to tell me he had seen the false doctrine in the SDA Church. When I realized he had lied to me, and he said, Either believe the SDA way or you are a false prophet. That's when I had to face the truth. I got my heart broken because I became impatient for my true soulmate to come. Then I realized I wasn't in love, but fell in love with the idea of being romanced and loved. Another Nicomaya wannabe came, and this time the heartbreak only got worse. And again, I blame myself. Yahweh always ended it before I placed these men in a leadership role in my life and ministry and father to my sons. These men were called to be tested and none were chosen to be my husband and leader of this ministry and father to my sons from a previous marriage in the world's eyes. None of these men were my soulmate and only one could be that special man, the one who was missing the other half of his soul. Me, like Adam's rib. Abba Yahweh showed me this truth. Everyone, male and female, was meant to have a soulmate. There is a void put in a soul that nothing can fill. First the love for Yahweh and Yahushua, and then there is another void for the love there that only your soulmate can fill. Most in this world marry and never find their true soulmate, for they marry according to the flesh and not the Holy Spirit. Nico says he respects and acknowledges the apostle and prophet and woman part of me, but the part of me that he loves the most and still does is the vulnerable little girl that few ever see. Nico says the desire to protect and shelter me from harm was great, and of course, since we have met and married, the desire has only grown stronger. My beloved soulmate and now husband saw beyond the anointing, and so few people ever even try to do that. I once thought everyone expected me to be an apostle prophet 24 hours a day, to only stay under the anointing. I have a good friend named Olga who I met through this ministry. She has been a partner in the ministry for years now and lives in Canada. She said something to me that touches my heart to this day. Olga said, even if I wasn't an apostle or prophet, she would love me as a friend anyway. She also sees beyond the anointing and she lets me be me, just like my husband does. Sometimes it gets exhausting to walk in the anointing 24 hours a day and not be allowed to be just a woman. Most won't understand that statement. It has nothing to do with sin, but it has to do with just being a normal woman. There are those reading this or listening to this, I do understand even Yahushua had to take a boat to go to the other side of the lake and take a break from ministering. Until I married my beloved, I seldom rested unless sick and tried to not sleep for many days in a row. I ignored my emotional pain by concentrating and praying and ministering under the anointing to others in pain. How few people knew that I was being stalked and abused, threatened with death, fighting with an ex-husband in the eyes of the world to even maintain child custody. Nico started out as an acquaintance, a brother in Yahushua, and a partner in the ministry, as so many other men have been. I never even expected to meet him. I did not know that he was being told by Yahweh to sacrifice everything he had, even his material possessions and job, 
to come to me. I was ministering in Arkansas, days away from moving to another section of Arkansas, when I received a phone call from Nico. He didn't even have a phone where he lived because of the seclusion in the woods in Minnesota. So phone calls from this partner in the ministry were rare, and so were the letters. Most of the time, he would just send a money order for his tithe. I answered the phone, and I told him I was moving and gave him the new phone number. He said he was told by Yahweh to move to Arkansas, and he was to help me move. He apologized because he didn't come as quickly as Yahushua had told him to come. He was trying to sell his SUV and other possessions. He said he would be meeting me and asked for my new address. I gave it to him and never thought he would really come. Many offer to help this ministry, but so few actually ever do, so I assumed he was just talking, would not follow through, and I would not be meeting him in person. My life changed the day before Thanksgiving in 2002. I was relocating from one side of Arkansas, Conway, to Harrison, Arkansas. Our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, had just given me a gift of a beautiful duplex rental home, secluded high on a mountain. It included a full empty downstairs apartment and a huge entire house upstairs where I would live with my teen son, all at a reasonable price. I was leaving the apartment in Conway for the last time and moving out. In less than an, half an hour, no one would be able to reach me at this phone number. I would be leaving and the phone would be disconnected for the last time. I wanted to be on the dangerous mountain roads before dark, which was only three or four hours away, but something kept holding me back as one email after another came in. I knew Yahweh and Yahushua were having me delayed, and I was waiting to see what the purpose was. Then, as I was about to sign off the computer and pack it away, the phone rang. Excitedly, I pick it up and say, Hello? knowing this was the reason I was delayed. On the other end of the phone was Nico, who I knew then by his other name. I said, So you are the reason I was delayed. In another moment, the phone would have been disconnected along with the computer. Yes, timing is always perfect, never too late, never too early, always right on time. Nico said he'd been praying, and all of a sudden he heard Yahweh say, Call Elizabeth now! He did not have a phone in the log cabin, so he called me from the bed and breakfast he just finished building. I told Nico I was moving and did not have a new phone number to give him yet. Nico said he was to tell me he would be also moving to Arkansas, and he asked for my new address. I gave it to him, and he said he would be coming to meet me. I thought, sure, I heard that a lot of time, and dismissed the thought as another man saying something that he would not follow through on. Still, I felt peace and joy in hearing my brother in Yahushua's voice. Now I could move, for the delay had been ended as I hung up the phone. I moved into the new house on Thanksgiving Day 2002 with my 12-year-old son, Prophet Boy Elijah, as Yahweh calls him. We had just begun to unwind and unpack when four days later a knock came at the door and it was Nico. My sister in Yahushua, Sharon, was with me, and I had just finished saying as I walked into this huge living room, I pray if that man is coming he doesn't come too quickly, for I'm exhausted, and this place is a mess with needing unpacking. I stood in the living room in my long red robe to my ankles and my hair still not brushed for I had just awoken from a restless night of sleep, so sure this man would not come, for surely Yahweh would warn me if he was really coming. Then I heard a voice, and it was a man who had knocked on downstairs door to the other apartment. I caught a glimpse of him as he was speaking with Sharon, and I ran from my bedroom. For there I stood in my long red bathrobe, and since I had just awoken, my very long hair was a tangled mess. I had no makeup on, not even my famous trademark black eyeliner. Yikes! I hate surprise visits like this, and as I was running to the other side of the house, I spoke out loud and asked Yahushua why this was happening, and who was this man really? Could he be my true soulmate that I had long awaited for? I mean, why was my heart pounding so fast? And why did I feel dizzy and faint? Men don't cause me to react this way. What was wrong with me? I heard Yahushua say, Allow me some surprises, Elizabeth. Yahushua's tone was light and full of laughter. I said to myself, Uh-oh, could this really be true? While I was looking out for my beloved soulmate all over the world, Yahweh brings him right to my door? I was praying the entire time. Who is this man that has come here and why has he been sent at this time? I had just decided I no longer needed a husband, nor would I look for the man that Yahweh had spoken to me about in a dream on December 10th, 1988. He had said, Listen, Elizabeth, I have indeed ordained a husband for you, and his name is Nicomaya. He is a living prophet of God, but don't ask me the date. I had seen visions of my soulmate, and his voice had awakened me from sleep, and my sons had even seen him in open visions and dreams. Why was I feeling so nervous and frightened? 
Daddy Yahweh, in the name of Yahushua, please answer me. Could this be my beloved Nicomaya that I have waited nearly 13 years for? Two weeks shy of 13 years? The man that was audibly prophesied to me by Yahweh? Then I heard Yahweh or Yahushua, sometimes I'm not sure which of them answer me, say in that still small voice with laughter mixed in it, Allow me some surprises, Elizabeth. I knew then this was no ordinary man. I knew my daddy Yahweh was up to something. And it brought him much delight to surprise me like this. <laughs> I had the worst battle with the spear of fear that day. Sharon entertained Nikomai with conversation while I hid for at least four hours in the bedroom. In the meantime, I was praying for the nerve to come out of the bedroom. I prayed for all I could feel was my beloved Savior Yahushua and Father God Yahweh laughing at me in great delight. I wanted to share in the laughter, but I was too scared. Have you ever prayed for something so hard for so long, and then when it really may be happening, you are so frightened that words can't begin to express the feeling? I was in shock, thinking, this can't be happening. What's the matter with me? As I was praying to be able to find my pantyhose <laughs> that was still unpacked, praying to find my contact lenses, praying what clothes to wear, for what if this was my soulmate, my Yahweh God-ordained husband? I was praying for Yahushua to steady my shaking hands as I tried to apply the mascara and kept poking myself in the eye. Out! <laughs> Men, try putting rubbing alcohol on your eyes sometime, and you will know how painful mascara to lengthen and darken the eyelashes can be when a shaky hand accidentally gets it in the eye. Women reading this, you know the pain, don't you? Oh, what we go through just to appear more attractive. All the prayers I was praying, and still I couldn't stop the shaking in my hands, and in the pit of my stomach, and the nausea that was rising in my throat from the nervousness and anxiety. I prayed so hard that it would look pretty, and finally I came out of the bedroom, for Yahweh would let me know it would be rude if I didn't stop hiding from this man that had driven thousands of miles to meet me. I left the room after praying in tongues, and tried to put on a brave smile. Again, I ask the reader, have you ever wanted something so much that when Yahweh finally gives it to you, the shock of what you prayed for finally happening causes you great fear and nervousness? When Yahweh laughed as I asked him if this was Nicomiah that was prophesied and he said, allow me some surprises, Elizabeth, I pretty much know my daddy is saying, yes, especially since no man ever made me so nervous. And when I'm that nervous and frightened, it is hard for me to walk in the anointing darn near impossible. So I feel like I was truly walking in the flesh that day. There stood this man in my kitchen speaking with Sharon. I went to him and introduced myself with my arms outstretched to give him a greeting and a brief brotherly hug. I thought I was handling this so cool and calm and now my beloved lets me know he didn't see the bold apostle. He saw the frightened little girl side of me. His eyes met mine. It was like our eyes were locked for a long time. Sharon noticed it. He had been driving for days, only sleeping briefly in the truck as he went from Minnesota near the Canadian border to mid-Arkansas. My beloved said how he even had brake problems on the mountain as they overheated and Yahweh told him to stop the truck, get out, lay hands on the vehicle, and pray. And then he waited and asked the angels to fix them. And in the name of Yahushua, when he was told by Yahweh to start the truck back up, the brakes were fixed. Later we found out that they were fixed by Yahweh temporarily for he had to get new brakes a week later. What a miracle when he saw the condition of those brakes. All oh, praise, honor, and glory goes to Yahweh and Yahushua for getting him safely to Arkansas. Another delay the devil tried to put on him was a storm that came up with heavy rain during which his windshield wiper broke. There were no mechanics or service stations on the mountain roads where all this took place. Nico could barely see to drive, so he pulled off the road again and asked Yahushua what should he do. Yahushua told him to take the shoestring out of the shoes he wore and to tie it to the broken wiper and pull it from out of his window. Laugh if you want, but it worked. Those are dangerous roads to be driving with brake problems and no windshield wiper on the driver's side. Another miracle was he had lost my address I gave him over the phone, and of course he didn't have our phone number. He remembered some of the directions though, and if you saw where that house was located, you would have known what a miracle it was when the angels of Yahweh and Yahushua showed him the way to the house. Even people with that address found it hard to find the very secluded road and house hidden on the mountaintop. One last delay he had was that by the time he got to the closest town to me, it was a Sunday night, and Yahweh said to him, 
Do not go to her without a rose. <laughs> that meant the florist and the stores were closed, and he had to sleep in his truck until Monday morning when the florist opened up. Nico obeyed, and now he stood there holding out the most beautiful, big, fragrant rose, and it brought tears to my eyes, for only I knew the deep significance to that rose. The last rose had been given to me by a Nico Maya wannabe, David M., a man I nearly married in 2001. Almost a year to the date before my true Nico Maya, my soulmate came. David was someone that only wanted to use me to get control over this ministry. He had given me a choice to marry him and use this ministry as a Seventh-day Adventist ministry, also admitting I was preaching false doctrine or say, Goodbye. I said, Goodbye. Yahushua was using Nico's single rose to wipe away and heal a great, painful heartbreak of a memory. For those that have followed this ministry for three years or more, you saw David's picture on the page that was posted when I introduced him. Every time I would see a rose, I would remember the pain of that broken engagement, that is, until Yahushua brought me my true Nicomiah, in which Greek means, victory belongs to me. Now every second of my beloved husband in my life is victory that belongs to both of us and this ministry. We have that testimony for truly, next to our salvation, love of our Messiah Yahushua, Jesus Christ, and the unique anointing, there is no greater victory than being married and loved by one another. These are the secrets our Heavenly Father has taught us that we have learned from no man or woman. No one has to pray for my beloved Yahweh, ordained husband and soulmate. The other part of this anointing and male covering of this ministry and woman to come into my life again. We are now married, and at least we know the meaning of what a soulmate, best friend, and holy anointed marriage is. My beloved and I now have a unique anointing to pray and bring soulmates together in the bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh ministry. My darling is truly the best in a man where I had known the worst in men. Both of us now know that marriage is a blessing and not a curse. Both of us were married before the world's eyes, but never in Yahweh's eyes, for we are the first to admit Yahweh did not put the other worldly marriages together. They were doomed from the start and ordained from hell to discourage us and keep us from finding each other. We have learned making love and marriage is beautiful and it should always be an ongoing romance that never stops. There is a difference. We have learned together what true love is all about. We have learned that being each other's best friend, starting out in a relationship is the second stepping stone. The first stepping stone is to be equally yoked in ministry. Your love and desire to put Yahweh and Yahushua first in your life. When you meet your ordained soulmate, the one who is to be your God, Yahweh ordained spouse, there will be three signs that will come forth. Yahweh showed us this. Don't settle for a counterfeit. One, the anointing will be revealed in the eyes. The first time we met in person, we ate spaghetti and we couldn't take our eyes off of each other's eyes. I saw Yahweh's anointing in his eyes as well as a reflection of myself. He saw the anointing in my eyes and he knew that he has always known me. I feel the same. We started as best friends, not lovers, nor even boyfriend and girlfriend. Two, friendship is one of the most important things you need in a marriage. If anyone is your best friend other than your spouse, you probably didn't marry your soulmate. On this earth, we are each other's best friend and we completely trust one another. We know that others may fail us, but we always will defend one another. We highly respect one another and encourage one another to do more for Yahweh and Yahushua to please our God and bring a smile to our Creator and Savior's face. A soulmate knows the importance of the loving relationship with Yahweh and Yahushua and the Holy Spirit, anointing which includes the calling on each other's life and never tries to come between it. You will get along so great, better than anyone you ever knew, and be very comfortable with each other. You will love one another for who the other person is and not want to change one another. Three, the next sign is the anointing in the hands. This sign had me fooled at first because we did not hold hands to start with. He was my son's teacher for homeschool and my bodyguard to protect me from my ex-husband as well as other demonically possessed people in this world. The first time he held my hand in prayer, his hand was sweaty. He was nervous for I was in pain. The second time, just five days after he arrived, we were in a messianic church in Eureka, Arkansas, and the people were singing songs of praise, and Yahweh told me to take his hand and pray for the anointing in me to be imparted to him. We were standing side by side, and I did this. My darling husband now tells me 
how he felt the powerful anointing in that prayer, but could not understand what was happening. I looked at him and wondered how he was still standing up, for the anointing was so strong on me. And many times when I would pray for others, the anointing would come on them so strongly they would fall under the power of the Holy Spirit. Yet he kept standing on his feet smiling. I still hadn't had the sign yet that he was my beloved soulmate, for I had not discerned the anointing in his hands. And I told another prophet this. Kathy, the other prophet, told me, A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. And she gave me a prophetic word that he was my soulmate, and the anointed would be revealed in the touch of his hand. The next Shabbat, we had an unexpected visit from a partner in Wisconsin named Wendy. As my beloved Nicomiah read the Torah on Shabbat Eve, we held each other's hands while we prayed, sitting side by side on the couch. That's when the anointing hit both of us so strongly it was like electricity coursing through our veins and we couldn't let go of one another's hands. Wendy sat there not quite understanding the magnitude of this. I don't think my beloved understood the magnitude, but I laid a fleece that if this was the Nicomaya I was waiting for, then the anointing would be in our hands. Always in my dreams about my Nicomaya, the anointing was in the hands as we touched. Now we can't stop holding one another's hands for the anointing only increases each time. Many times one or both of our hands go completely numb as we lightly hold each other's hands and Yahweh says that it's because the anointing is too much for the flesh to handle. Truly the anointing in me has been imparted in my beloved husband and he has become the most anointed man I have ever met. I needed to have a man more anointed than me, for I needed this to be able to respect him for the anointing on him also. I can't explain it, but a woman always wants a man to know more than her, to be stronger than her, and yes, I wanted him to be more anointed than me. Yahushua and Yahweh speak to my beloved, and he has a unique anointing I struggle with, and that is praying only for the next step. He does not want Yahweh prophesying 20 steps ahead of time, and I do. So this is the way Yahweh has always anointed me, and I get uncomfortable when I don't know things way in advance. My beloved's faith only needs the next step. So in some ways, I believe my Nicomaya has greater faith than I do. How many times my beloved husband has said to me, Don't worry, everything will be alright, even when it looks like it won't. He sees it already worked out, and that is what happens. Truly, his anointing is for victory, just like his name says. I want to add this. Don't let race, age, appearance, career, or lack of one stop you from accepting your soulmate. The main thing that you will have in common is your intense love for Yahweh and Yahushua and the desire to serve them. Not just any Christian believer can be your soulmate, for everyone has a different personality and someone was made just for each of us. That soulmate will be your perfect balance. Where you are weak, he or she will be strong and vice versa. For instance, my darling is the calm one, and I am the one that easily panics. My darling is physically strong, and I am weak. I am more apt to display a temper, and he is the patient one. My darling husband is not afraid to show his emotions, and I try hard to block them. In my life, I thought tears would show how I was weak, and I didn't want the devil to know that he succeeded in hurting me, so I would deny the pain and tears. My beloved husband has taught me that tears are healing, and I am not to bottle up the pain anymore if it only comes out in other ways like attacks on my health. I never trusted a person on the face of this earth to weep in their arms, for I always thought, even as a young child, I had to be strong. I am learning that I can trust someone, and he is not only my best friend on earth, my soulmate, but my husband and now leader of this ministry. 4. The last sign that this is your soulmate is this. Yahweh will seal it with a kiss. Nico and I met on Thanksgiving of 2002, and even though he lived downstairs, we saw each other daily, and we never did anything more than give a quick sisterly and brotherly hug, mainly goodbye or goodnight, and once I kissed him on the cheek for his birthday, February 11th. We did a Jericho march around the outside of the house for seven days, starting February 14th, 2002. Nearly everything we marched for, we now have answered. One prayer was that if it was really my beloved soulmate and God-ordained husband, that all mountains would be removed, and I would have a sign that I could not deny. For all this time, when people would say that Nico was your beloved soulmate, I would make excuses that we were not even boyfriend or girlfriend yet. Maybe God made him so holy that he's my soulmate, something was overlooked. These were questions I asked Yahweh for my beloved soulmate in my dreams were romantic. And here it was February and he never even looked at me in any way but as a best friend and a sister. And of course respected the anointing. 
Nika was never dominating in any way. However, Yahweh surprised me one morning by waking me up and telling me to put Nico Maya in charge of all my finances and the finances of this ministry. Oh, that didn't set well with me at all, for I had an ex-husband that controlled me that way, and I had said, Never again would a man do that to me. Now Yahweh was testing me to see if I would obey, and I did. Remember, I haven't even been kissed yet by this man. I had no assurance yet that we would even marry, and now I was being told to hand over the checkbook and finances to a man that I had just met a few months ago. I remember Nika would suggest that I not call other men hun or babe. I said I meant no harm that this was part of my loving sisterly personality, and he would say that I should reserve those words for my soon-coming husband. But I wouldn't want to receive his words of wisdom and would literally hide in my bedroom for up to four days at once until Yahweh would speak to me audibly, awakening me to tell me that Nico was right, and I must apologize to him and admit Yahweh vindicated him that he was right and I was wrong. I announced on February 11, 2002, the new leadership of the ministry. This was a huge step of faith and the birthday of Prophet Nicomiah. I was told by Yahweh to announce before the world that Nicomiah was now the earthly leader of this ministry, that I was second in command. I was told by Yahweh to announce it to the world on February 11, 2002, Nicomiah's birthday. He was surprised that I did this, as I was surprised that Yahweh and Yahushua had told me to do this. I made this announcement before I even had my first kiss from Nico. I did this because Yahweh told me to obey and trust Nicomiah. I had never trusted a man before, and now I was told to turn over the ministry and announce a new earthly leader to this ministry, a man that I had no proof, as far as I was concerned, that he was my beloved soulmate. What if I was wrong? The devil tormented me with those words. Satan reminded me that I had labored with blood, sweat, and tears, fighting through years of abuse of every kind and mockery in all ways, going to a great depth, giving every cent I had to this ministry, never asking for a dime for airfare or food or lodging when I ministered, even in Canada. I have risked my life and it took a toll on my physical and emotional health as I burned the candle at both ends, never thinking I could give enough to the people and to Yahweh and Yahushua. All the while going through court battles to maintain child custody and running and hiding from a homicidal maniac, all because I desire to be able to help others and lead them to Yahushua. I thought, where was this man when I was going through all this labor and now Yahweh is telling me to hand the reins over to a man? I questioned Yahweh and wondered if I had gone insane or done something wrong. I always knew when my soulmate Nicomaya came that it would be like an atom bomb hit as our two anointings came together and I looked forward to him coming and taking the leadership role off of these female shoulders. The strange part was when Yahweh did tell me to hand the reins over to Nicomaya, I struggled to obey. I felt inferior as though I was being tossed aside, like a mother who gives birth and watches her child grow only to have someone else come and take over the parenting and leadership role. Despite these struggles, I did obey Yahweh and hand the leadership reins over to Nicomaya. I prayed a fleece, asking Yahweh for a sign that I have obeyed him, and now I ask for proof that this man was truly my God-ordained husband and soulmate. I didn't have to wait long. Things started heating up really fast to where Nico didn't look at me like it was anything more than a sister. I can't explain it. But we grew closer, and his comments and looks were different. On the last day of our Jericho march, February 21st, 2002, we always marched at midnight around the outside of the house, holding hands with my son. As we got to the porch steps, he was about to open the door. He stopped and stared into my eyes. I said to myself, He is going to kiss me. I could feel the intense love in his eyes, and I could feel the silence in the spiritual realm like something great was going to happen. Imagine my surprise when he broke the eye contact, opened the door to let me in. We quickly said goodnight, and he went downstairs to his apartment without even a brotherly hug goodnight. No one knows the beating Satan gave me that night as I sat in the dark in the living room on the couch. I wept silently in the dark, huge sobs tearing out of my throat, thinking, Surely this can't be my soulmate and God-ordained husband that was promised to me 13 years ago. Surely he is a nice man and a loving brother in Yahweh and Yahushua, but I must be a false prophet and Satan must be playing a joke on me for now I have fallen deeply in love with a man, handed over the ministry and the finances to him, and he doesn't even have the desire to kiss me or look at me in any other way than a sister, friend, and pastor. I could hear Satan and his demons laughing at me in the spiritual realm, and when I prayed for answers to Yahweh, I got none. 
I could discern that angels were saddened by my sobs also. I can't explain it, but I just know. Then the light came on in the kitchen, and I was startled by the light blinding me, and quickly hid my tear-stained face and brushed my tears aside. There in the kitchen stood Nico. He was asking me what I was doing still up, and why was I sitting in the dark. I told him I was up because I felt like it. And please, do not be concerned. He shrugged his shoulders and said, Okay. And I knew, he knew, I had been crying. If I remember correctly, even my son woke up and caught me crying right after Nico went back downstairs to his apartment. I finally went to bed angry because I had just fallen in love with a man I was sure never feel the same way. For Yahweh had said the sign that Nico was my God-ordained soulmate would be sealed in the kiss. He said that the lips are shaped like two rainbows, for when a male and female soulmate kiss, it is the sealing of a promise, just like a covenant between the two of them and their father God, creator Yahweh. The anointing of a soulmate will be in the kiss, even if the angel has to put up a force field to have the lips meet. On February 23, 2002, Nico and my son and I had been playing a card game called Uno. I had buried my hurt feelings, and instead laughter had taken its place. When we finished the game, my son went to the bedroom to watch TV. Nico and I were saying goodnight as we put our arms out to give each other a friendly hug goodnight, which was common. For some reason, we went to kiss each other on the cheek this night, which we sometimes did, and there was nothing sexual in it. But this night, when we went to give our brief hug and quick kiss on the cheek, something strange happened. Our lips hit a force field. That's the only way I can explain it. And we didn't kiss each other's cheeks. We kissed for the first time on the lips. Neither of us intended this, and both of us laughed, and we were shocked. Later, Yahweh explained that our two angels had put up their hands on each side of our faces, and our lips met in the center as we hit the force field of the angels. I was embarrassed, not understanding how this happened until I later prayed. Later, I found out that my beloved had loved me all along and knew we were soulmates and that I would become his wife, and he wasn't surprised, as I was, nor embarrassed. He also confessed to me that Yahweh had told him to kiss me that night on the porch steps, but he chickened out. This was the only time I could say my beloved has been a coward in any way. Ha ha. He will tease me for admitting this before the whole world, but he knows it's true. The next night, February 24, 2002, I found out just how much Nico did think of me as a beautiful woman. For the next kiss in the kitchen, over a heart-shaped meatloaf I had made, he didn't need the angels to put up a force field to get our lips to meet. My darling Nico taught me what true love and anointing and a kiss is all about. He still shows me every waking moment in more ways than I can begin to count each day. We are together 24 hours a day, and we never get enough of being together. In the poem Yahweh had given me about my Yahweh God-ordained soulmate, bone of my bone, he audibly spoke the words, I will have to give a new meaning to the word quick. This would come to pass just weeks later, Nico and I were married. I had thought I would have a big, lavish wedding, but I realized that was just for others' benefit. Truly, the ceremony that counts the most is the one before Yahweh. The others are witnesses to your marriage, but Yahweh is the one that truly marries you and binds two soulmates into one. Nico and I also learn that soulmates are not to wait once a year to celebrate the marriage covenant, but rather every month. When you celebrate your anniversary monthly instead of yearly, you will forever remain newlyweds. Yahweh himself taught us this. Also, we don't take for granted the coming together as one flesh without first anointing one another and asking Yahweh and Yahushua to love us through each other. We thank Yahweh and Yahushua for their love only makes ours stronger, and we thank them for their passion, for it only increases more each day as well as our love. We humbly admit that everything we have learned, we have learned either through our mistakes or also at the feet of the throne of Yahweh and Yahushua. I end with these words Yahweh taught my husband and I as he spoke forth from a prophetic message given to me. Overwhelming, anointed love will overcome anything. As I write this, Valentine's Day, which a pagan holiday, is fast approaching and it is a day that is supposed to celebrate true love. Marriages get in trouble when they rely on one or two days a year to show true love. Every day should be like a Valentine's Day for born-again, Holy Spirit-filled couples who put Yahweh and Yahushua first in their lives and marriage. Please read the following Bone of My Bone poem that Yahweh gave me in the dream as he spoke it to me. Husbands, ask yourself, are you the best husband you can be? Dare to compare your opinion to Yahweh's requirements of a good husband. 
Although this poem was written for my soulmate and now husband before we even laid eyes on each other on earth, I can honestly say he fits all of Yahweh's requirements, and although he warned me not to put him on a pedestal, for who knows him better on earth than his wife, best friend, and soulmate other than our Heavenly Father Yahweh and Savior Yahushua? If a man loves a woman only for superficial beauty, that is lust, not love. There is no other man on the face of this earth that could handle this anointed woman but my soulmate. My darling husband has taught me that the color of my platinum hair doesn't impress him. My makeup doesn't impress him. My pretty clothes don't impress him. He doesn't care that I am not at my perfect weight, and he doesn't care that I'm no longer 21. He has taught me that all this is superficial beauty. My beloved husband looks beyond the anointing, and he loves me for the woman with qualities like a vulnerable child that I have tried hard to hide. But nothing can be hidden from your soulmate. Yahweh has taught my husband and me what true love is and how beautiful marriage can be when it allows the love of our Creator and Savior to flow through both of us. My beloved is teaching me balance, something I am striving to learn, putting the family needs even before the ministry needs. In closing, there could be no finer earthly leader to this ministry or husband or father to our sons. In my lifetime, I never learned anything from a man until I met my beloved. Now I learn new things from him every day. It has taken all night and most of a day to write this, but I am professing my love and admiration and gratitude to the whole world for Prophet Nicomiah. And one day, everyone that ever said a prayer for my soulmate to come and the male head to this ministry to come forth will meet us face to face in heaven. I know this. There is no way any couple could love each other more than we do. I know there is no way any marriage could have more laughter, love, and anointing than what we have. I will forever praise Yahweh for creating my beloved soul and joining us together. Love and blessings in the name of Yahushua, for the glory of Yahweh. Apostle Elizabeth Elijah Nicomiah.